So this is an important part of the message of Joe Salatin, or Salatin, or whatever, the poly farm, poly face farm guy. Uh, the, he was saying, he made a point of this since he was in Berkeley, is this idea of ecological isolationism. You know, that people, um, a lot of people just think, hey, we have to, like Dragon Spirit was saying in, in the comments, um, make sanctuaries. Now, I believe in sanctuaries, but just philosophically now here, that's not the solution. A sanctuary is the thing literally off to the side, let to go its own way, and that's great. And you need that, that kind of a reserve. But human beings, I mean, it's, it's, we can shoot for the stars here. The human beings do know how to do things like uh, the polyface farm. We do know how to make a land more bountiful in its own terms. Don't get confused. We're not talking about the bounty. Watch the, that video for a couple times and get this part if you didn't already, please. We're not talking about the bounty that someone might see in, in 100 acres of some monoculture, 100 acres of corn or soy or something, which I don't like people that badmouth. I think corn and soy are cool, but yeah, it's this, that's not bounty. We're talking about the bounty of a grass field, right? The bounty of a grass field that genetically has diversity through it, that's 12 foot tall, that, that's, the, that's what we mean. We mean the way the forest looks when the conditions are just right. You know, and if you spend, I spent a lot of time in nature in my life and as a kid and paying a lot of attention looking at it, I noticed when you walk around a forest, you know, there's dry spots. And sometimes you get to a spot where there's just stuff growing over it. Often, a, for example, a spring. But that's not necessarily enough for what I'm talking about. This is like the sun's been hitting just right for the week or whatever, and it's just... You can tell. Well, human beings can massage and make that kind of thing happen. And it's beautiful. I mean, it's like um, a Miyazaki film or something where you can, you know, scratch your uh, finger in the dirt and it sprouts up. You know, this is a beautiful thing and this is what we live off of. And that's what the stuff we live off of lives off of. And we need to discover this symbiotic idea. The, the problem with separating ourselves is it's just false. It's like, first of all, it's, it's a separate but equal thing. You know, and it's, and it's accepting that, well, humans aren't really part of nature. Look, we fuck nature up. That's not an option because humans are a part of nature. You know, if we poison the world with radioactivity uh, after we're gone, creatures that can handle or even prefer radioactivity will come along and we will have been a part of nature. It might be the ugly part um, you know so let's not be let's be the beautiful part have you noticed of all the controversies we we have there, there's no controversy about bountiful healthy life like that is beautiful it's a beautiful thing and um, and you can do it I mean people are worried yeah they won't really be doing it or they're just lying or no every you know, you, you believe this evil nature of man. And I believe in, in the, the, the evil behavior of man. I don't believe the evil nature of mankind is predetermined. I think we're evolving right now and we're going to find out. And uh, we, I, I think if we put uh, nature in a separate but equal cage that'll never work because we're not going to survive unless we bring nature back into the city you know we need goats and chickens on the roof uh, eating you know a grass patch that so they produce the fertilizer to make tomatoes in sun boxes you know that's what I see if that doesn't come into the city the cities are gonna die and we know and a lot of our futuristic artists draw this high-tech city with overflowing boxes and green and we know we have to do that it cools off the city everybody knows the city is but I remember when I was a kid I went to New York and it was cool but it was you know wastelandish in a lot of the alleyways and streets and it's just you know uh, you know a big machine that you're in we get we go to the park and uh, up at the top of the 
you know, buildings like a mile up there or however, you know, plants are spilling over from the plants that are growing on the top there because that makes it enjoyable, makes it nice, it cools it off, it, it can bear food. So we need to bring nature in it to the city. So yeah, we need some reserves, um, but even there people should be able to go into the reserves. You just have to follow rules like we do now and there's certain reserve places where you have to pack out your own shit. You can't even shit in the ground and leave it in there. So the reserves and places like that, you know, um, can be visited, but you just have strict rules. But, but I don't want to think of that as a solution of, of separating it off because we need advice from that stuff, you see? We need advice from that stuff. I think we could use agricultural methods where we could have our sustenance for a city grown in the city. For, for, for one thing, I think you could get a huge percentage just using all of the space that's just grass and stuff and, and letting farmers use that for raising foods and rooftops and all kinds of stuff. But I also think you could build a building that would use sunlight and inside it would have artificial light and it would just be um, a mega smart farm and it'd be uh, organic in the sense of you could use less pesticides by the fact that you control you just keep pests out of the indoor environments at least and so you won't you know that's one way you control it but of course you'd be more technological and when you're given an artificial light and stuff but you could grow some vegetables that way and be a lot more healthy of a vet of a vegetable than the way they're grown with these big gas guzzling machines that that are involved now but i'm not good enough at agriculture to really you know run the math on that but i just feel like you could grow a city's food in the city these days like some sort of sustenance you know like if the trucks and boats couldn't come that they'd have enough food maybe they wouldn't have some sort of thing that they were used to that only comes from you know pears from Georgia or whatever. They probably don't have pears down there. Pears from Washington. Uh, and they wouldn't come in, but you'd have some sort of sustenance. But, uh, but regardless of how that works out, we need, um, you know, we need this nature. We need to bring uh, some of this natural cycle back into the city. Huh? It was a mistake to try to separate ourselves to think of ourselves as separate in storms like Sandy and whatnot show you we're not really separate. You know, we're just in denial and this this bubble doesn't even really exist. Yeah, we may vacate a space, make it seem like it's a bubble and we're separate, but no, nature's all around us. Let's let it back in. 